I wonder what I can make out of these pot noodle containers. So today I thought we'd uh, look at helical antennas. Now normally when people talk about helical antennas you picture something like this. This is a 14 turn helical antenna and it uh, gives about 11-12 dB of gain if you believe the calculators that are online but uh, it's too big and cumbersome. It's not something I'd carry around with me. You can't easily throw it into your backpack and they're actually very difficult to mount on something that's portable. You can't hold it like that because uh, you would interfere with the gain along here just by having your hand there. So uh, what if we could have something that uh, gives us all the properties of a helical antenna but much smaller and can fit into your backpack. So this is what I've come up with. This is a um, three turn helical antenna and as you'll see later it uh, doesn't give you that much less performance when you uh, compare it to this 14 turn one. So uh, there are benefits to a helical antenna and uh, let's have a look at some of them now. Now one of the uh, benefits of a helical antenna is its circular polarisation. Now normally with most antennas your polarisation is either vertical or horizontal. So a helical antenna can really benefit you if you live in a built up area where there's a lot of buildings around you. Although buildings are normally made out of brick or concrete, they do contain a lot of metal and can reflect a wireless signal. So with a normal, normally polarised antenna, either vertical or horizontal, let's say this one's vertically polarised, and it bounces off this building, then it'll switch to a horizontal polarisation. And every time it does that, it'll switch again and again. And every time it switches, it will lose up to 1 dB of gain so if we've got a 6 dB antenna here by the time it gets here it'll be 5 dB and then when you take into account the loss over distance which you would normally get anyway your signal can be uh, quite a weak signal but with a helical antenna because it's of its circular polarization every time it hits a surface like this and bounces off it doesn't change so you don't get that loss that you get with a normal antenna and that's why a helical antenna is really good in a built up area where there's a lot of buildings and a lot of uh, buildings that can deflect a signal. So we'll quickly look at some of the things you're going to need to construct this antenna. You need to download the template, it's in a PDF form, there's a link at the bottom in the description box. You're going to want some cardboard tubing, um, any kind of cardboard tubing, toilet roll tubing, anything like that some wire, now this is galvanised steel wire that's used in fencing it doesn't have to be copper wire although if you want to use copper wire a good source of that is uh, household electrical cabling in particular the earth cable, you normally get quite a thick one from there you want a small piece of tin that you can solder to and we'll have a look at that a bit later, what you need that for you want a BNC connector you want a small piece of copper wire it's going to go in the end of the BNC connector. You want uh, some kind of sheet metal, this is actually uh, aluminium, to cut the base out. That's going to go with your pot noodle container and that's going to be glued onto there. If you can't find anything quite thick enough, tin from um, tin cans and, and boxes and things like that tends to be a little bit too thin, a little bit sharp, but uh, if you laminate it to a piece of wood and then cut it out that works a lot better. You want uh, one of these angle brackets that I've shown you before and you want to drill yourself a 10mm hole in the end there so you can fit the BNC connector through and you just want some impact adhesive. So you want to glue your template to your cardboard tubing just like this and what I'm going to do now I'm going to actually cut this out so we can get the correct diameter so then it, once you've got it cut out, if you get some tape you just tape up the side so you get a nice cylindrical tube so now we're actually ready to start making our windings around the cardboard tube now you can if you take your time actually use this finger here holding it in there to support the wire as you're bending it round and leave yourself a little bit extra here at the top that you can trim back later but I find it a lot easier if you get some of this plumber's pipe PVC plumber's pipe 
and this is a little bit smaller diameter than what we actually need made a little bit of a hole there so I can put my wire in and it keeps it in place there while I do the turns now I'm not measuring the turns here I'm just doing them roughly as I need them to get a bend in the wire so that's definitely longer than what I need so I'll trim that off and I can remove this from the pipe like so so I've removed it from the uh, PVC piping so I've already got the basic shape that I want so it's going to make it a lot easier to put around this cardboard tubing now so just trim this little hook off here and what I can do is now feed this into here like so get it roughly where I want it so a little bit extra sticking out the top there and get yourself a little piece of tape and tape this first bit into the top here And then work your way around, getting your coils, your turns, matching the pattern exactly. Just keep using tape to hold it in place as you work around. makes it a lot easier bending it first on that PVC pipe just keep working your way around taping it up until you get down to the bottom so you've got something that looks a little bit like this and I've got quite a bit extra at the bottom here and I've trimmed the top off there so what you're going to need to do now you're going to need to uh, drill a hole through the base for the BNC connector so the easiest way to do it if you get your cardboard tube with windings on that wants to fit in the middle like so you take your BNC connector and it's going to be offset to the side slightly because this bottom winding is going to come out and it's going to we're going to solder it onto the uh, center pin of the BNC connector so if you just line it up like so and get a marker pen roughly put a hole like that and you drill through an 8mm drill bit through there. So when you fitted your BNC connector and you want to solder your little piece of copper wire in the end of it here and solder all the way up the sides as well because we're going to actually make a little metal shim now that's going to be soldered onto here and soldered onto the end of the wire here so we can make a connection. So now we're going to actually Looking to uh, make a little metal shim out of the tin and best way to do it is to cut it out again this is included in the download link below and get a bit of tape stick it over the top and then you can stick that down onto your piece of tin and just using some normal household scissors you can actually cut it out of the tin then so once you've got your metal shim cut out, you want to give it a uh, sand with some fine glass paper or emery paper. Get rid of any lacquer or paint that might have been on there. So uh, when we come to solder it, the solder will adhere to it a lot better. Because we're going to be soldering this 
to the bottom of this wire here, this winding, the bottom winding, and then that's will connect onto our BNC connector. I'm just using normal 30 watt soldering iron. So once we've got the copper shim soldered in place to the bottom winding here, I'm going to take the base and then holding the copper tube in the centre of the base, we're going to solder that edge of that shim onto the uh, small piece of copper wire that we've already soldered onto the BNC connector. Then what we'll do, we'll just trim any of this excess away that we don't want when we've got it in place. So before we actually glue this together to the housing, I thought I uh, really want to touch on uh, this metal shim. Now, this is a really important part of this particular antenna, and uh, there's a good Wikipedia page on it if you want to uh, do some further reading, some really good forums out there as well. Um, basically what it's doing is, the coil of wire here is uh, acting at 150 ohms. The cable that we use to connect it to is only 50 ohms so it's actually matching the impedance so it's bringing this down from 150 bringing the signal down to 50 ohms so it's matched to the cable and then on into the wireless adapter so it's really important that this metal shim is uh, in place otherwise your antenna won't work properly so here are the finished antennas um, we've got a two turn one we've got a three turn one and if you have a look at the graph on the left hand side of the screen there you'll see that um, the performance difference between the two is, is not that much and also if you compare it, I've also uh, took a comparison of this 14 turn helical antenna it's not that much more powerful than the 3 turn one and of course with this 3 turn one it's um, portable and light, you can throw it in your backpack you can uh, hold it in your hand, one handed, scan around and uh, it's just a lot more portable than uh, your normal helical antenna so I hope you have a go at building this. Uh, any comments, drop them below, the questions, and I'll uh, get back to you. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.